In this module, we will learn how to do assembly of parts in Autodesk Inventor. So first we open the Autodesk Inventor, then go to New. First we will make parts. So let us do sketching of few parts. So we will make a rectangular bar. So after fixing the dimensions, we can finish the sketch. Now we will use extrude command to make 3D bar. So this is a rectangular bar. Now let us save this part for our assembly. So we will make one more part here, a circular disk. So we will use the sketching and use the circle. So make the circle and then fix its dimension. After fixing the dimension, then we can finish the sketch. Again, we will use extrude command to make give thickness to this object. Now in this circular disk, we will make four holes. So we use the hole command and make the hole of required diameter. So the hole has been made in this circular disk. Now we will use circular pattern to replicate this hole in this disk. So in Autodesk Inventor, it is not necessary to make the same feature again and again. We can use the pattern command. So using this pattern command, we can make different number of holes. So here we will make four holes. So basically it has replicated the same hole three more times. So we will save this part as well.
So now we have got two parts saved. So now we will move on to assembly. So assembly is here. So please select assembly mm. So it will give us a new template which is basically a space where we can assemble the parts. Now we have to recall the parts. So by clicking we can bring this part. So as many number of times we click we can bring many uh, copies of the same part or we can right click say OK to stop this process. So we have got the two number of numbers of the rectangular bar here. Now we will also place the circular disk, the disk we have just made with four holes. Now you can see that one object goes into the other object and this is because there, has, there is no constraint here. They are all free to move and they are basically virtual objects. Before assembly, we should understand that every object by default has six degrees of freedom, three linear movements and three rotational movements. So we will use the constraint commands to bring constraint to the movement of the object planes. There are many commands in this constraint command and you can use any of them as, as necessary. So here we will use the mate command. So mate command is a very very common command and here basically we will try to mate two surfaces together. So now once we mate the two surfaces together they come together and basically they will restrict their movement between the two but other movements are possible. So therefore we have to bring more constraints to make these two objects get together. So we will constrain the edges. So at least two edges have to be constrained. So now by constraining the surface and the edges, we have brought these two parts together. So this is an assembly. So we have assembled two rectangular bars together. Now we will assemble this disk to the bar. So again we will use mate command to join the disk with the rectangular bar. So meet this surface of the disk with one of the surface of the rectangular bar. So these two surfaces have been mated. However, still there is movement because there is a still a relative movement. So you can delete any operation you have done by clicking on the left side. So now the disk is out of the rectangular bar. Similarly in this uh, constraint command there are many other commands. For example tangents, insert, symmetry and so on. So as necessary, we should use the other commands as well. So here we have used the tangent command to bring the disk onto the surface of the rectangular bar as a tangent.
Now let us delete this operation. Next we will use the join command. By join command also you can join two objects together. So we select the center of this disk. In the center of this surface of the bar. So now these two objects have been joined together. But this is a rigid joint, so there is no relative movement between the two. Within join command, there is also something called rotation command. So again we join the two surfaces but with rotation command so that there is a rotational freedom for the disk. So in order to see the movement between the two, we will ground one of the part. So you right click uh, and ground the one of the parts so that the other part can be moved. So now this disc can move, can rotate relative to the rectangular part. So we have assembled two rectangular bars together and then we have assembled a circular disk to these assembled rectangular bars. And we have used the rotation join command so that this disk can rotate. Now we will add one more disk on this bar on the other end of the bar. Again, we will use the join command rotation. So we have completed the assembly of two rectangular bars and two circular disks with holes. Thanks for watching this video and if you have any comments please write them below.